You've probably seen this before. Sine, cosine, defined with the simple right triangle. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. Tangent is opposite over adjacent. And this is what we call so ka to. But what happens if we change the size of the triangle while keeping the angle the same? Do the sine and cosine values still stay constant? Let's imagine a 30 degree triangle with hypotenuse equals 2, opposite equals 1, and adjacent equals root 3. Then sine will be 1 over 2, cosine will be root 3 over 2, tangent will be 1 over root 3. If we stretch this triangle, let's say to hypotenuse equals 4, sine and cosine becomes 2 over 4 and 2 root 3 over 4, values exactly the same with the original triangle. Now, if we shrink the triangle, let's say to hypotenuse equals 1, again, the values are exactly the same with the original triangle. So even when we stretch or shrink the triangle, as long as the angles stay the same, the ratios between sides remain constant, meaning all such triangles are similar. So sine and cosine only depend on the angle, not the size of the triangle. But there's a problem. This only works for angles less than 90 degrees. What about angles like 120 degrees or 270 degrees? As we increase the theta, the triangle gets taller while becoming narrower at the base. However, as the angle reaches 90 degrees, the triangle becomes a line and not a triangle anymore. So above 90 degrees, we can't build a triangle for those. So to keep using sine and cosine, we need a new idea. To make things even simpler, let's pick one triangle, the one where the hypotenuse is exactly one. Let's find sine and cosine of this triangle, leaving the tangent aside since the former two are the most basic ones. For the base and height, let's call them x and y. Since hypotenuse is equal to 1, opposite over hypotenuse becomes just opposite, making sine equals to y. Adjacent over hypotenuse also becomes just adjacent, making cosine equals to x. Therefore, when hypotenuse is equal to 1, sine becomes the height, and cosine becomes the base of the triangle. Now let's put this triangle on a coordinate grid and rotate it to see how the triangle behaves as we change the angles. We'll always start the angle from the positive x-axis and rotate counterclockwise for positive angles. Here we keep the hypotenuse at length 1 and rotate the triangle angle by angle. The tip of the triangle traces a perfect path, a circle with radius 1. This is called the unit circle. It's center at the origin and its radius is exactly 1. Since hypotenuse equals 1 makes the opposite equal sine and adjacent equals cosine, the x coordinate of the point becomes cosine theta and the y coordinate of the point becomes sine theta. Therefore, that tip of the triangle always lands on a point with coordinates cosine theta, comma, sine theta. These coordinates are now the new way we define sine and cosine. We can now define sine and cosine for any angle. For example, at 120 degrees, the coordinate of the point is cosine 120 degrees, comma, sine 120 degrees. Now you should notice that the sine and cosine are not always positive. Since we're in second quadrant, where x values are all negative, cosine 120 degrees is a negative value. Then what about 225 degrees? The coordinate will be cosine 225 degrees, comma, sine 225 degrees, both negative values since we are in third quadrant where both x and y values are negative. Finally, at 330 degrees, sine is going to be negative as y values are all negative in the fourth quadrant. Now, we saw how sine and cosine behave in different quadrants, but what happens if we reach 360 degrees, a full circle? Can we go further? Since the triangle can keep rotating, 
sine and cosine keep repeating. For example, 30 degrees in first rotation and 390 degrees in second rotation are both in same location. That means sine 30 and cosine 30 are going to be exactly the same with sine 390 and cosine 390. Therefore, sine and cosine are cyclic. They loop every full circle, 360 degrees. Sine and cosine can also take negative values. When we rotate the triangle clockwise, we're creating negative angles. But there's no need to worry. The same rules still apply. For example, cosine minus 30 and sine minus 30 are exactly the same with cosine 330 and sine 330. That's because the triangle ends up in the same position on the unit circle. We're just approaching it from the opposite direction. The unit circle is powerful on its own, but even stronger when we connect it with special right triangles. 45, 45, 90 degrees triangle has side 1 over root 2 to 1 over root 2 to 1. And 30, 60, 90 degrees triangle has side 1 half to root 3 over 2 to 1. Let's apply these special triangles on unit circle. Take 30 degrees for example. We can build a 30, 60, 90 triangle inside the unit circle. So the coordinates for 30 degrees are root 3 over 2, comma 1 half. Now watch what happens when we go to 210 degrees, which is the same angle as 30 degrees, but rotated into third quadrant. The shape of the triangle stays the same, but now both x and y are negative. That means the coordinates at 210 degrees are minus root 3 over 2, comma minus 1 half. What about minus 45 degrees? Since minus 45 degrees is 45 degrees clockwise from the positive x-axis, we use the 45, 45, 90 triangle. Compared to 45 degrees, the shape of the triangle stays the same, but now y is negative. That means the coordinates at 45 degrees are root 2 over 2, comma minus root 2 over 2. This symmetry is what makes the unit circle so useful. It lets us use just a few known triangles to figure out values in every quadrant. Alright, we began with triangles, simple shapes and simple ratios. But as we turn those triangles and place them in a circle, something amazing happened. We extended trigonometry beyond 90 degrees, beyond triangles, and into a system that works for every angle, positive, negative, or even beyond a full rotation. So next time when you hear sine or cosine, think of them as x and y coordinates on the unit circle, defining angles beyond just right triangles. This video is brought to you by Lighthouse Global your personal online tutoring for IB, college applications, and school subjects.